And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called La Granja. This was originally published by Spielworks, and then Stronghold brought it to um, America. This is a game about, you know, I don't even know what this game's about. It's about some kind of farm, and you're delivering goods. But in this type of game, that really doesn't matter. It's more about the game mechanisms. Now, I was intrigued when I heard about this game because I heard that you could use cards in different ways. Now, that doesn't always make these games good. Maybe it does. Let's find out. In this game, you are shockingly trying to get the most points. You're going to get points through various ways. But first of all, to figure out how the game works, you're going to look at your own area down here. As the game goes by, you're going to get cards that you're going to be using. And these cards in your hand are worth nothing. But when they're placed in your area down here, they're going to get you different things. If you place them on this side down here, these cards are going to bring you certain resources every turn. So like every turn, this card is going to produce a grape. Or this, if I have both of these, every turn I will get an olive. And so as the game progresses, progresses, I'll be able to use these olives and grapes for things. I can even pay money to change them. And here I can change it when oil or I can change grapes into wine. And so these tokens that I have will count as different things. I can save grapes over, over time or buy, I can just outright buy them. But if I put a card on this side, it's going to produce them every turn. If a card is placed on the other side, it's going to allow you to pay money to make more deliveries, it will give you income of money, it might give you room to store pigs, and it will increase the size of your hand. They'll do different things over there. If cards are placed at the top, they will allow you to make orders. So if I have an olive, a grape, and wheat, I'll be able to deliver that to get a crate of goods and three points. And so if you put cards up there, they give you the opportunity. And then at the very bottom, when you put a card in, it essentially gives you a special power. Sometimes these powers can only be used once. Sometimes they can be used throughout the game. So at the beginning of each game, players are going to get to place two cards out. Um, you can put them wherever you want. You can put any cards in any of these locations. And then as each turn of the game goes by, you're going to be adding one more card. So And there's possible ways to add extra cards as time goes by. So you're going to get, you know, basically you have to decide what you're going to do. Now realize as I'm going over these rules that I'm not going to explain everything, just kind of give you a concept of how the game goes. Uh, each turn, players are going to produce goods based on where their cards are. They have the opportunity to buy roof tiles. These roof tiles will give you special one-time bonuses, and the more you build, the more points you'll get. You will also get actions. A certain number of dice are rolled each turn based on the number of players. Those dice are placed on the matching numbers here. And so I'm going to place them next to them so you can see the different actions. And then players in turn order are going to draft dice, and when they take the die, they'll get that action. So this one gives you a pig, this one gives you a resource of your choice, or you can draw another card or play another card. Two resources that aren't the same, four coins, two coins, you make a delivery, or you can change two different goods, or you can move up over on the, the morale track, track over here, which can give you points and also determines who goes first each turn. After players are done with those actions, and there's lots of things that you can do that aren't on your turn, you know, there's different things like, for example, every player has goods that they'll get over the game, and you can always change those in for four coins or different things that you can change them in for. Or you can pay money and make goods bigger, you know, there's different things that you can do. But the whole point of the game is to deliver. Usually you want to deliver to your cards. When you deliver to your cards, you're going to get victory points in a good, but you also get to put a market out here on the board. So if I deliver a three-point market, I can place it here which will give me three points. If someone is in a market next to a market I place on the board that's a smaller number, boom, I don't know, I guess I committed arson and blown them up, or I don't know, whatever. Either way, they go away, and I get a point for each market I go away. So placing on a six has a chance to get rid of a lot of markets that are around it of other people's. You also, instead of delivering to those, you can just deliver to an open market. Here, for example, you can see that this one takes oil, wine, and uh, I guess those are lamb chops? I'm not sure what they are. Uh, or pig, pork chops, I'm sorry, I do know what they are. 
if I deliver these three goods here, then I'll be able to take a tile off the stack here. Those tiles give points, but they also give special abilities that you can do. And so players have to decide whether they want to build in the market or deliver to one of these. Some of these take longer to fill up. You have to fill up a row of six coins here. Some markets are closed at the beginning of the game and they'll open up as turns go by or as other markets get finished. And that's essentially how the, the gist of the game. You're going to be playing cards, trying to get your special abilities up. You're going to be trying to figure out what goods you're going to change and sell at certain times to get points. Most points at the end is the winner. Surprisingly enough, I really did enjoy La Granja. It was fun. I think much of my fun comes from the card play. As I sat there at the beginning realizing that I had a handful of cards and I could use each of those cards in four different ways and I could start out by producing a lot of goods or producing more money or giving myself a special power and producing goods or put out some orders and try to get them out. I'm not very good at the game as I found out but I didn't care because I had so much fun as the game went by trying to get combos. You can set up little engine combos, delivering markets of some goods. If you do that you get a token and every time you do something else you get this and and then there's that in the middle as you put those markets out, you really are knocking other people's markets out, which can be a bit of interaction. And I found that interesting. There's that and each turn when you make deliveries, there's these donkey tiles. And each of these tiles uh, lets you do a certain number of deliveries or increases the siesta track, morale track, whatever it is. And so you have to decide which one is to use each turn and you can try to increase on the CS track because going first can be a big deal when you're drafting those dice, which is another mechanism I really enjoy in this game. Um, you have to decide which one to pick. In fact, that dice drafting mechanism, aside from the cards, I found to be incredibly fascinating. You pick the, each of those dice, each player is going to get two. The last die that no one picks, everybody gets that action. And so the last person who's picking a die is going to sit there thinking, okay, if I take this action, I'm going to get, they're going to get both actions, right? But they have to decide, do I want to take this one for myself? Which one do I want to give everybody? Turn order is pretty critical in this game. And there is an economic part to it. You have to keep track of money. Money can be very tight. Or if you work really hard, you can have lots of money, but <clears throat> maybe not a lot of points. The game itself looks a little bland. It has this very, I mean, the way the box is, is the way the game is. It's this big blob of yellow with all the stuff around. And it's, it's not horrible looking, although... It does look like someone left the game out in the sun for a very long time. And then uses some pretty generic components. And eh, it, there's a lot of symbology on, on, on the board itself. The card special powers are clearly laid out. But it's not maybe the easiest game to learn. Like, like they, they give you um, cards there that you know, help you do, know what to do each turn. They have symbols on and it takes more time figuring out what the symbols mean. Then you might as well just memorize the turn order. All that being said though. Still very enjoyable game for me. It's an upper weight style game, but the, the goods is very straightforward. You can take these goods and deliver them or upgrade them once and then deliver them. Very simple. You can have pigs, which if you have two pigs can produce more pigs and that's fine. Or you can sell them or deliver them. And it's very straightforward, but there's enough different options. And when you take the cards, your own area is going to be very different than everyone else's. And so I feel like the, the game isn't asymmetrical, but as it goes on, it becomes more and more asymmetrical because I have some cool special powers or some cool things that no one else has. So very fun. I was surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did, but certainly one to take a look at La Granja. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.